The Manila Conference is a major activity of the ANU Philippines project, the joint initiative between the Australian National University and the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Canberra, Australia. And this time, we are very fortunate to partner with the Ateneo School of Government, Ateneo de Manila University. It's easy to assume that everyone wants peace. In fact, it's quite likely that many do want peace. But why isn't it that simple? Peace and prosperity is good not only for the Bang Samoro, but for the whole of the Philippines and the region, including Australia. As we all know, the Philippines has been one of Asia's brightest spots in terms of economic growth, especially during the last decade. No? Ambition natin 2040. Aligned with this vision is the government's commitment to bring down poverty incidence from 21.6% when it was measured in 2015 to 14% by 2022. We can grow between 59 to 6.3%. That's not a question. The question is how to sustain that over the, the long term because the capacity is already there. But we're talking here of President Rodrigo Duterte who in the second uh, quarter of this year recorded the historic a high, a record high of approval in terms of rating 80%. Normally at this time, the uh, support would have plateaued or normally at this time, the support would be going down. But um, the president has shown uh, extreme resilience. Is there polarization in the Philippines and is social media a big part of that? Filipinos spend more hours per day on Facebook than anyone in the world for five years in a row that we are social been doing surveys. The more you're engaging with the same kind of discourse and the same kind of people, it reinforces biased views about uh, the politics. Charismatic rule can quickly disintegrate in the face of everyday concerns. Where has change come under the Duterte uh, administration? You might say that uh, right now U.S.-China relations are uh, um, perhaps at their lowest point. The longer this unfortunate state of affairs persists, moreover, the greater the risk that regional tensions could spill over into open conflict. Right now, the Philippines will probably simply go with the flow, given that ASEAN itself you know, is unable to really, really clearly define its direction uh, with respect to those. You know. Mr. Duterte is correct to place the Philippines' national security interests at the forefront of any such review process, just as Mr. Trump insists on placing American security interests in the forefront of his own country's uh, security behavior. More than half a century later now, the problem of regional disparities still persists. We can achieve a decentralized setup that actually looks like a federal setup, and that's what we call a maximum decentralization arrangement. If somebody is being left behind, it's not, we don't have an inclusive group, and these people is going to rebel against you because they feel that the land of promise is only true for others, but not for some. Uh, seemingly, the metrics that is being used by the government, particularly the security and the development sector, is not yet in sync with each other. No? They are not yet in sync. And they, it actually poses a lot of problems. When there's a lot of money available to build and rebuild in terms of relief efforts, the money really needs to go where it's got to go and often gets sidetracked into different places where it shouldn't go. There is a need to demand accountability from the Philippine government to raise BARM like a child, which needs to be guided and nurtured, despite the presence of brilliant and diligent people. One of the common things that we all aspire is to develop a peace, a long-lasting peace in Mindanao. And we have a glimmer of hope right now um, as we are trying to build and establish peace with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. The Philippines keeps on roaring and soaring, but whether that economic soar will be sustained in the next uh, few years or in the medium term up to long term is still a question 
in view of the challenges that were uh, discussed. The Ateneo School of Government, the largest non-government school of public service in the country, continues to partner with like-minded organizations to provide platforms to discuss governance, regional and national security and development related issues. Rest assured that we in the Ateneo School of Government will continue to train and engage the next generation of leaders, reformists, and policymakers. We will remain committed in nation building and share the responsibility to form leaders who will spearhead reforms. Again, thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again in our future events.